In the previous episode, we learned that to say an object is moving, you need to have something stationary to compare it to. As you drive, you pass along the trees, buildings, and people which serve as your points of reference. We also learned about the differences between scalar and vector quantities, where the former shows magnitude only, while the latter has both magnitude and direction. In addition, we discovered the similarities and differences between distance and displacement and speed and velocity, and how they are used to describe the motion of an object. Lastly, we realize that an object accelerates when its velocity increases and its direction of motion changes, while it decelerates when its velocity decreases. But how can we visualize and interpret the motion of an object using graphs? To answer this question, let us create and interpret visual representations of the motion of objects such as state charts and motion graphs. Before we begin, let us first define what graph is. In mathematics, a graph can be defined as a pictorial representation or a diagram that represents data or values in an organized manner. Furthermore, graphs use the x and the y coordinates. In physics, graphs are used to plot values in the x-axis to represent independent data while those in the y-axis to represent the dependent data. Here is an activity that you can do to help you with your investigation. We then analyze the situation below and follow the procedures stated in the two missions you need to accomplish and answer the questions in each mission. Suppose you were having your on-the-job training in a private investigating company. You were asked to join a team assigned to investigate a hit and run case. The alleged suspect was captured by the CCTV camera driving down the road leading to the place of incident. The suspect denied the allegation, saying that he was then driving very slowly with a constant speed. Because of the short time difference when he was caught by the camera and when the accident happened, he insisted that it was impossible that he would already be in the place when the crime happened. But when we were viewing the scene again on the camera, we noticed that his car was leaving oil spots in the road. When you check these spots on site, you found out that they are still evident. So you began to wonder if the spots can be used to investigate the motion of the car of the suspect and check whether he was telling the truth or not. Mission number one will be accomplished using tape track. To do this, we will use paper strips with dots. Let's label each dot starting from 0, then 1, 2, 3, and so on. Notice that each dot occurred every 1 second as shown here. Observe the motion of the mechanical car. Examine the distances between successive dots. How will you compare the distances between successive dots? Yes, you're right! The distances between the successive dots are almost the same. Now, let's cut the strip at each drop starting from the first to the last drop and paste them side by side on the graphing paper to form a tape chart. For the second question, how can you compare the lengths of the tapes from one another? Perhaps you may say that the length of the second tape is twice the length of the first one. The third one is twice the length of the first one and so on. For the third question, if each tape represents the distance traveled by the object for one second, then what quantity does each piece of tape provide? Right, it's the car's speed. 
For the fourth question, what does the chart tell you about the speed of the car? You may say it is increasing, decreasing, or stay the same. Which one is the real deal? Right, it's the car speed's constant. For the fifth question, how will we compare the changes in the lengths of two successive tapes? As what we have answered earlier, the length of the second tape is twice the length of the first one. The third one is twice the length of the first one, and so on. For the sixth and the last question, what then can you say about the acceleration of the moving car? Right, the car is moving at a constant acceleration since its velocity or speed is constant. For mission number two, we will be using motion graph. After measuring the distance traveled by the car after one second, which is 3 centimeters, 2 seconds, which is 6 centimeters, 3 seconds, which is 9 centimeters, 4 seconds, which is 12 centimeters, and for 5 seconds, we have 15 centimeters. We can see here that the speed can be easily calculated by dividing the distance and time. So for the first second, we have 3 centimeters per second. 6 divided by 2 is 3 centimeters per second. For 3 seconds, we have 3 centimeters per second. For the fourth second, we have 3 centimeters per second. And for the last second, we have 3 centimeters per second. Using the data in the table, let's plot them as points on the graph. For question number 7, how does your distance time group graph look like? Great! We can see here that as the time goes by, the distance increases in the process. Using the tape chart, let's join the midpoints of the top of the tapes with the line. You have now converted your tape chart to speed time graph as shown here. For question number 8, how will you interpret this graph in terms of the speed and acceleration of the moving car? We can see here that the car is moving at a constant speed, which means our acceleration is moving at a constant loop. For question number 9, if you found out in your investigation that the arrangement of oil graphs left by the car, is like what you use in this activity. Was the, was the suspect telling the truth when he said that he was driving with constant speed? Yes, the suspect is driving at a constant speed. Let us summarize what you have learned by relating distance, displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration graphically. If an object does not change its position at a given time interval, then it is at rest or its speed is zero or not accelerating. If an object covers equal distance at equal intervals of time, then it is moving at constant speed and still not accelerating. If an object covers varying distances at equal intervals of time, then it is moving with changing speed or velocity. It means that the object is accelerating. The figures below show the graphical relationship and their interpretations. As the x increases, y remains the same. There is no relationship between the variables. In a direct relationship, as the x increases, y increases proportionally. y is directly proportional to x. For indirect relationship, as the x increases, y decreases. y is inversely proportional to x. For direct square relationship, y is proportional to the square of x. And for the inverse square relationship, the square of y is proportional to x. 
Now, let us apply what you have learned in this lesson. In episode 1, you perform fun walk and fun run. Plot the distance traveled in the y-axis and the time to travel that distance along x-axis. Compare the graphs of fun walk and fun run. Tell something about the relationships of the distance and time in each task. Write a 2 to 5 sentence reflection at the end of the lesson. Please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, MathCycle, like the videos, and hit the bell button for updates. I hope you learned in today's lesson. On the next episode, we'll be inferring that waves carry energy and we'll be describing the characteristics of sound using the concepts of wavelength, velocity, and amplitude. This is Sir Michael Leonard Lubiano, your science teacher. See you all next time.